Forming a C corporation or C corp is a significant milestone for many entrepreneurs. It marks the transition from a small business to a legally recognized entity with greater potential for growth and investment. While the process may seem complex, each step plays a crucial role in establishing a solid foundation for the corporation's future success. And by the way, if you would like to get help in forming your own C corporation, make sure to reach out to Northwest Registered Agent. And for your convenience, I left my affiliate link down in the description of this video. They're professionals and they'll be able to help you out. Plus, clicking on my link doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me support the channel. And with that in mind, let's get started. Essentially, C Corporation is a legal structure that separates the business from its owners. This means that the corporation itself is responsible for its debts and liabilities, not the individuals who own it. Plus, unlike other business structures, C Corps can have as many shareholders as they want. Now, here's where it gets interesting. C Corps can raise money by selling shares of the company. These shares represent ownership in the business and shareholders can own just one share or millions. But here's the catch. While the corporation pays taxes on its profits, shareholders also have to pay taxes on dividends they receive. This is what's known as double taxation. But why choose a C Corp over the other options like S Corps or LLCs? Well, if you're planning to have more than 100 shareholders, want to attract international investors or issue different types of stock, a C Corp might be the way to go. Now, let's get down to how to start a C Corporation. The first step in forming a C Corp is to register a unique business name. This name serves as the identity of the corporation and distinguishes it from other businesses. Choosing the right name is essential as it will be used in all official documents and communications. It's important to ensure that the chosen name is not already in use by another business and complies with the naming requirements set by the state. Once the business name is secured, the next step is to appoint officers to the corporation. These officers, including the CEO and members of the board of directors, play a vital role in guiding the company's direction and making important decisions. The CEO is typically responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the business, while the board of directors provides strategic guidance and oversight. With the leadership team in place, the next step is to draft and file articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State in the chosen state. These articles serve as the legal foundation of the corporation and outline key details about its purpose, location, and structure. Filing the articles of incorporation formally establishes the corporation as a separate legal entity distinct from its owners. As part of the incorporation process, the corporation must also draft company bylaws. These bylaws establish the rules and regulations governing how the corporation operates. They cover various aspects of corporate governance, including the procedures for holding meetings, making decisions, and issuing and transferring shares of stock. Bylaws help ensure that everyone involved in the corporation understands their roles and responsibilities and provide a framework for resolving conflicts and making decisions. Once the corporation is officially established, the next step is to issue stock. Stock certificates represent ownership in the corporation and are distributed to shareholders. Shareholders may include the founders of the corporation, investors, and employees who receive stock options as part of their compensation package. It's essential to keep accurate records of who owns what percentage of the company, especially if the corporation plans to have more than 35 shareholders. In addition to issuing stock, the corporation must obtain a business license to legally operate. Business licenses are typically required at the state, county, and municipal levels and grant permission to conduct business activities in a particular jurisdiction. The requirements for obtaining a business license vary depending on the location and type of business activities. Furthermore, the corporation must obtain an employer identification number from the IRS. An EIN is a unique identifier assigned to the corporation for tax purposes. It is necessary for opening a business bank account, hiring employees, and filing taxes. The process of obtaining an EIN involves completing and submitting Form SS4 to the IRS. Finally, depending on the location and nature of corporations' business activities, it may be necessary to apply for additional identification numbers required by state and local governments. These identification numbers may be needed for various purposes such as unemployment and disability insurance. In conclusion, forming a C corporation requires careful planning and attention to detail. Each step in the process plays a crucial role in establishing the corporation as a legally recognized entity with the potential for growth and investments. 
By following these necessary steps and seeking professional guidance when needed, you can successfully navigate the process of forming a C-Corp and lay the foundation for your business's future success. And don't forget that if you would like to get help in forming your own C-Corp, I highly suggest you reach out to Northwest Registered Agents by clicking my affiliate link down in the description of this video. They're professionals and they will be able to help you out. Plus, clicking on my link doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps me support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.